Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Wisdom of Gayatri Mantra. Pravrajika Devyananda Prana. I will smoothly say that eventually if I say it enough. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so I read a comment, decided to find this one, and uh, decided to go ahead and do it because we're kind of on that Gayatri uh, train. Again, I have a basic understanding of what it is. It's a prayer mantra assuming they're kind of similar but it's a tantra meaning that there's external forces or external things needed to get going with this anyways let's go and get started Gayatri mantra comes in both the Rig Ved and the Yajur Ved and today now I'm going to dwell only on this because many of you have asked for it and since you want to know everything about it and how to chant it we will do something of that for the next half an hour but you must grasp everything that is being said because this is the most powerful mantra available to us to bring us to this level of experience to awaken us to reality you know it is actually like a lighted torch which will open up the doors of wisdom for you Gayatri is the most powerful mantra what is a mantra? mantra means manana trayate iti mantra when you think about it repeatedly, it will liberate the mind. That is a mantra. And Gayatri means Gayantam Trayate Iti Gayatri. One who chants it, it liberates him. That is Gayatri. It is the most powerful mantra, which, which is also a prayer. It is a prayer kama mantra to open your dhi, the higher faculty of the human intellect, which opens you to the heart of reality. It is called the spiritual heart. It opens the spiritual heart so that you perceive reality as it is. <coughs> I had told you about faculty development. It is one of the ways of perceiving these higher subjective realities, what we have been discussing, consciousness and all that. One of the potent ways to do that is to awaken the dhi. This, this is a faculty of the human intellect which simply brings the truth into your heart. It floods you with the light of supreme truth. So the Gayatri is a mantra to do this. It is a prayer for this faculty. How do you use the Gayatri? See, first of all, let me <coughs> give you some basic information about Gayatri. Gayatri is usually given during our Upanayan ceremonies, isn't it? For brahmacharis, for householders, it's a very important mantra because it will develop this higher intelligence in you. And Gayatri is personified as a Devi. And it's, she's called Gayatri Devi. You must have seen the picture, hmm? a five-faced goddess. She's called Vedamata. She's the mother of all knowledge. From he comes all knowledge and the right perspective to everything. Hmm? So it all depends on the development of this faculty of dhi. Please remember this. Gayatri has enormous benefits and blessings. <coughs> Real quick, um, she's saying that's the most powerful mantra and all that. Um, I want to kind of hopefully put this out there, my thoughts. The way I look at this is like more like a, let's say there's a race going on, in a vehicle race. You can get the most novice person in the most powerful and fastest car in the world and put a, a, and they would not know how to use that car to its full potential. <clears throat> so I'm assuming Gayatri mantra is kind of like that where yeah you may know the words but if you don't know how to use it properly you will not reap the benefits a hundred percent of the benefits of it so obviously you know you can't just <clears throat> hey here it is and then boom you're fully liberated but it's more along the lines having full understanding of it and doing everything properly I, I assume that's on everything but again I, I just in case I, I know whenever I was thinking it's like oh it's the most powerful mantra and I my Western way of thinking would be like, oh, so if I just do this, then I'm boom, done. But no, it's the best way I can put it in an example would be like racing. You can put a complete novice in a, the most powerful and the fastest vehicle in the world, and that vehicle will be the slowest thing possible because <laughs> they don't know how to use it, they don't know anything about it, don't understand it. So obviously, eventually, uh, that novice driving that car, practicing every day, learning about it, understanding it, will eventually make the way to be. A very quick driver for that car even if you do a little of it you will understand its power it will not just awaken the higher intellect it will 
open all your faculties of intuition. In the Vedas, it is um, five faculties of higher intelligence are mentioned. They are like this Dhi, which is your spiritual heart. Then you have Medha, which is a very bright higher intellect. Then you have Pragna, which is higher awareness, Dhriti, higher will and Smriti, great memory. Gayatri awakens all these five. These are five powerful faculties of your intelligence, which gives you transcendental, brings into your heart transcendental knowledge. Gayatri awakens all of these. It gives great inner stability to your mind, deep inner calmness, just the chanting of Gayatri and it will remove obstacles from your path. It will remove dangers from your path. That is the power of Gayatri. It also gives you very strong memory. You see the last thing which we discussed, concentration, memory, all these capacities of the human mind are awakened and enhanced by the chanting of Gayatri. Hmm? So it is a very powerful mantra. I will first give you the story behind this mantra and then go into the mantra. Hmm? There is a big story behind how the Gayatri was uh, given out. You know how these mantras are come out of the mouths of sages? Do they think about it and invent them? They are mystic syllables which are discovered in very high states of samadhi and meditation. They are mystic syllables which lead into, which give you a direct insight into reality, lead you into reality as it were. So it is not a matter of, it is not a thought construction sort of thing. They are the outpourings of enlightened sages and this mantra, Gayatri mantra was given to us by Vishwamitra Rishi. Hmm? The uh, person who gave out the Gayatri is Vishwamitra, the presiding deity of the Gayatri mantra is the sun, Savitra. Sun was the symbol of Brahman in the Vedic age, hmm? the supreme reality and the meter used in Gayatri chanting also is called Gayatri. Now this Vishwamitra Rishi Initially, he was a king, he was a very great king, a very powerful king who had conquered a lot of kingdoms. It so happened that one day he was along with his entourage, along with his army, he was passing through a forest when he came across the hermitage of Vashishta Muni. Vashishta was a great Brahmarishi of olden times. You must have heard of the names. Hmm? So, Vashishta's uh, hermitage he came across and he got down to pay his respects to the Brahmarishi. So, you see this was our culture always the greatest administrators was, would come and ask for spiritual knowledge, would bow down to spiritual knowledge because they understood its value, they understood its value to human society. So, Vishwamitra entered the hermitage and his army also entered his all his troops and he came in front of uh, Vashishta, bowed down to him and asked for his blessings and Vashishta asked, uh, asked him that everything is well in your kingdom. And he said, yes, by your blessings, everything is well. Please bless me with more power and wealth and all this. And then Vashishta said, please rest here for some time. Your men are also tired and I will offer you some food. Refresh yourself and then you can proceed. Now, Vishwamitra refused initially because he's, he thought, how will they provide us food? There are thousands of men hmm? and why should we simply disturb the hermitage? So he said, no, it is okay. We will go back to our uh, kingdom and have our uh, food. But Vashishta insisted. So, Vishwamitra stayed back. What did Vashishta do? He got up from his seat, he went inside and he had a cow, a divine cow. Kamadheno, you have heard, hmm? the giver of all boons. So, he whispered something in her ear. He whispered something into her ear and it seems this divine cow, she was a goddess in the form of a cow. Whatever she was asked for, she could give. So, he asked for food for the entire army and very quickly huge uh, vessels of all sorts of delicacies and rich food was presented in one corner of the ashram. And Vashishta went and invited the Vishwamitra and all his uh, disciples, not disciples, his uh, soldiers to come and have the food. All of them relished the food and it was divine like nectar. And then Vishwamitra was so surprised, he asked Vashishta, how did you get all this? 
in this forest and then he said see i have a mother i worship her as mother and uh, she is the one who provides us everything that we require and she is a devi so then uh, vishwamitra you see greed came into him and the ego was already there he thought this cow should belong to me because i am the king everything in the in my kingdom belongs to the king so he told vashishta give me the cow i will give you any price you want for it vashishta said don't make this mistake she cannot be sold she is a goddess she is a devi and she is the giver of all boons i will never part with this cow because she will she wants to stay only close to a place where there is this ambience where there is brahma vidya being practiced where there is brahma gyan she will not go into your palace but vishwamitra was furious now he said what do you mean i must have that cow and he told his men go and forcefully bring her at once the cow ran behind vashishta and vashishta said don't make this mistake i told you once more i tell you she is a divine being don't make your soldiers touch her otherwise you will pay for it and vishwamitra said i don't believe in all this i am going to take the cow and go and then vashishta just raised his brahma danda you must have heard of the story real quick <clears throat> it's kind of weird he goes over there and praises this person believes in the fact that his kingdom was so successful because of him and because of his blessings then all of a sudden sees something a bit miraculous you know how did he get all this food you know a, a bit strange but you know within reason it can be reality then now all of a sudden demands things it's really weird I mean, understand kings tend to be very greedy, and they want everything to be theirs. But then, at the same time, um, I, I guess this goes falls into a little bit of uh, a lot of the other stories where kings tend to they seem to be friendly, but then when they see something they want, they just somehow completely forget the blessings they've received from a person and just turn on them. Huh? And the entire army was destroyed. all of the men fell down on the ground and vishwamitra was simply stunned what happened it was the power of the realization of vashishta which is that brahma danda which he would hold he would just hold that uh, wood on which he would do his spiritual his japa and the entire uh, uh, army was simply destroyed so he said that there is some great power in this in this particular thing then he tried to attack vashishta again just by raising the brahma danda he became powerless without any strength then he said dhik balam kshatriya balam brahma balam eva balam which means all this this prowess and uh, strength which i had the ego which i had in being so strong and courageous with such a huge army such a huge kingdom it means nothing compared to this strength which this sage has this is the real strength a knower of brahman is so supremely strong just by his mind by his will he can control a whole army so then he said well i will acquire this kind of strength and then i will come and show you and he turned back he went back to his kingdom he gave his kingdom to his sons to manage and he went into the forest to do austerities and it seems for a long time if you go to the puranas they will live in say thousands of years because you know that sense of time is different you know how they they sense time time is in you so for a long time he performed austerities and then after that he uh, came to this understanding slowly his mind was changing but still he had not overcome the tendencies of his mind the tendency towards arrogance ego pride this was still not completely gone So at this point of time comes the story of Trishanku. Hmm? Have you heard that story? You know, there was a king who wanted to go to heaven with his body, and he went and his name was Trishanku. He went and requested Vashishta, please help me. Vashishta said, please pass on. I do not do such stupid things. And he was angry. He went to his um, sons, Vashishta's sons, and said, "Your father cannot send me. You please send me." So he was cursed by his sons. and he became a very ugly person and then he comes to vishwamitra who was doing his austerities and he says you see vashishta is refused to send me can you do it 
Now you see an enemy's enemy becomes your friend. Uh, so this uh, he became automatically became Vishwamitra's friend. And uh, Vishwamitra said, what Vashishta refused, then I will do it for you. I am there, do not worry. I have performed so much austerity with the power of this austerity, I will send you to the heavens. And he did, did uh, all sorts of his uh, rituals and all that and Trishanku started rising to heaven in that very body. But this is against the law of cosmic existence, is not it? One Only after death one can go wherever according to his karma, wherever he has to go and he cannot go to heaven like this. So at once Indra came into the sky and said, you cannot do this, please stop it. And Vishwamitra said, what do you mean? I have done so much tapasya, he will go up. And so Trishanku hung in the middle. They would not allow him into heaven and he could not come down on earth. So it seems Vishwamitra with his powers created a heaven for him right there. And like this, uh, in, in a state in which he was upside down, you know, he hung there. And even now they say Trishanku heaven. When somebody is undeciding about something, they say Trishanku state. No, oh, that's, uh, I figure she maybe use uh, the term limbo. It's also something that's, I think, in Western culture, limbo, where you're not, you're not alive or dead. You're not in the earth, but you're not in heaven. You're in like in the between world. So <clears throat> this was uh, Vishwamitra's power. After this episode was over, Vishwamitra suddenly realized that he had spent all his power, spiritual power in doing all this for that Trishanku, just because he hated Vashishta and he helped him. He understood the level of his pride and his ego. It is all, you see, Vash Vishwamitra's life shows you how important it is to get rid of all this to control your mind. To actually reach the knowledge of Brahman is no joke. Hmm? So, when he understood all this further, he went into austerities. He said, all my spiritual power got exhausted by doing all this. I will perform more austerities. He went deep into the forest. Again, he sat down. Again, hundreds of years passed by. This time, another big obstacle came before him in the form of an apsara called Menaka. Hmm? You might have heard of that story also. So, she seduced him and then he, uh, again, he went out of his austerities and for a long time, he was not in touch with this, this deep goal which he had fixed for himself, that of becoming a Brahmarishi, getting the knowledge of Brahman, becoming equal to Vashishta. He forgot about that. After a long time, he came to his senses and then Menaka also left him and he came to this understanding that how am I wasting my powers? How I am wasting my time? Lust, anger, ego, hatred, this... Uh, feeling of uh, malice towards somebody, jealousies, all this can actually ruin you completely. It, it will stop your progress towards your fixed goals. This is what Vishwamitra's life shows. It also shows that through, through the triumph of his will and his understanding, he overcame all this. He again plunged into great austerities and this time he got a certain level of illumination. After a long time of austerity, he got uh, the vision of Lord Brahma who came to him and asked him, blessed him with the title of Maharishi, Maharshi. Hmm? Then Vishwamitra said, but do not I deserve the title of a Brahmarishi? Then Brahmaji said, no, for that you need the blessings of a Brahmarishi. So go to Vashishta, <laughs> take his blessing. If you have re really removed all these negativities from your mind, if you have conquered them, not just removed temporarily, please see this. What tapasya means, you must have a knowledge. For self-knowledge, tapasya is required. So, tapasya means purging your mind of all impurity, completely cleansing it, not simply emptying it temporarily, becoming absolutely pure in every way. Then only this knowledge is possible. So he said, go and take the blessings of Vashishta. And Vishwamitra came to Vashishta. When he came near the hermitage, he heard the conversation between Vishwamitra and Arundhati. Vishwamitra, uh, sorry, between Vashishta and Arundhati. Hmm? Vishwamitra has come to the hermitage of Vashishta. So, Vashishta is telling Arundhati, you know, I have been following the spiritual progress of Vishwamitra and I am supporting him silently that he attains this illumination. He is a good man. His very name indicates Vishwasya Mitra is Vishwamitra. He is the friend of all. But this arrogance had come into him 
I hope he will be able to overcome it. I am helping him in his spiritual progress. As soon as he heard this, Vishwamitra was so ashamed. With whom? That's why he is a Brahmarishi. He is beyond all this duality, all this stupidity. And so he came and fell down at Vashishta's feet. Please forgive me for what I have done. As soon as his head touched the feet of the sage, a spiritual current passed through him. And spontaneously in his heart arose the Brahma Gayatri. Om Bhur Bhuvaswa Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat Spontaneously it is rising within him, it inundated him and he merged into Samadhi. When he came out of that state, he found Vashishta blessing him and this Gayatri emanating from within his heart continuously. When he went back, then Vashishta told him, now you have become a Brahmarishi. You have attained the knowledge of the Supreme by overcoming all weaknesses at all levels. And then when he returned back, he gave this Gayatri to everyone. That is why he is the Rishi who gave the world the Gayatri. So that this is, this is a means. You see, what is the Siddhi for the Siddha becomes a means for those who are trying to become Siddhas. So the Gayatri, that is how it comes to us. It is, it encapsulates the essence of Vedic wisdom because it is a prayer for Dhi. If you have understood the value of this higher level intelligence, what is called the spiritual heart, the awakening of this, then you, you get entitled to receive that knowledge. If you do not understand its value, the value of this level of spirituality, how will the knowledge ever come to you? So this is the Gayatri Mantra. Let us just discuss the meaning and then we will repeat it. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Om is the symbol of Brahman, hmm? the sound symbol of Brahman. Bhu Bhuva Swaha are the three planes of existence, which Bhu means actually this earth. Bhuva is the world of manes, Pitralok jo kehte. Swa is Swargalok, the heavens. Hmm? Now all these worlds, there are slight different interpretations also, which you will get of these three words, bhu, bhu, bhuva, swaha. Like for example, bhu is considered the embodiment of vitality, bhuva is the destroyer of suffering, swa is the giver of happiness. Like the slightly different interpretations also you will find. Typically in our shastras, bhu, bhuva, swa are these three worlds of this earth, the world of mains, pitralok and uh, the world of the gods. Now, all these three are illumined by what light? That Savitur Varenyam, by the light of the sun. Who is Varenyam? Who is the most, uh, the best, the choicest, the most adorable one? He is illumining all these three worlds. Bright, the bright sun. Bhargo, the destroyer of all sins. Devasya, that divine one. You see Dev, the Dhatu for Dev is Div, which is divinity, shining, the shining one. Dhimahi, may he imbibe my intellect. Dhiyo, this intellect, which is ours, Yonaha Prachodayat, may he illumine that intellect. And imbibe, may my intellect become capable of imbibing this supreme knowledge. In this way, may he illumine my intellect. Hmm? So that I may get this Brahma Jnan, Brahma Vidya, so that I may experience the knowledge of the Supreme Reality. May He so inspire my intellect, the Sun, the most adorable one, the divine being who illumines the three worlds. May He so illumine my intellect that I will get the knowledge of the Supreme. This is the prayer of Gayatri. So let us repeat it. Huh? Once repeat it after me, Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha, Tat Savitur Varenyam, Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi, Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat. So every syllable should be very clear, confidently you must repeat it. Hmm? See, I have put it here. Please see this, every syllable should be very clear. When you repeat it, you can't mix up words and repeat it anyhow. It's a very powerful mantra. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Once more, repeat it after me. 
ओम भूर्भुवस्व तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्य धीमहि धियो यो न प्रचोदयात नाउ हाउ डू यू चैंट गायत्री यूजली इट इज प्रिस्क्राइब दैट यू मस्ट चैंट इट इन द संध्या पीरियड विच मीन्स एट डॉन एंड एट डस्क I didn't really say too much because I well it really had nothing to say. I was learning, but um interesting. Um is that the entirety of the mantra? It's pretty short it seems. I I figured it it's something a bit perhaps maybe long or maybe a little bit more elaborate in terms of external stuff because again Sadhguru talked about tantra and Lakhani I think talked about how it's no longer <clears throat> something necessary from oh, not necessary not necessarily necessary but it's it can't quite fit into modern times um tan and tantra if from my understanding is usually dealing with external things needing external sources to do or start up whereas yoga is all internal tantra is dealing with external as well needing external things i'm i'm not still too sure about that but from my understanding with her it's more of just a a mantra to uh, do during dusk and dawn nothing really external well there's still five more minutes so maybe you'll be added towards the end there mm, these are very special times when nature is very quiet naturally the gayatri will fructify blossom within yourself if you practice it at that time dawn and dusk at least at these two periods and usually one not eight times repetition is recommended hmm? you can also do it 36 times at dawn 36 times in the noon and 36 times at dusk time hmm? and another thing you should remember is you can't do gayatri anywhere and anyhow you must do it in a clean place in a posture proper posture treat her respectfully i told you it is a po- very powerful mantra she is a devi how would you worship a devi hmm? so just repeating it anywhere repeating it half don't do that it it is something very sacred hmm. something very elevating so you must do it with full respect and then if you cannot do it one not eight times at least 12 times intensely with concentration you should do it with the meaning going on in your head Hmm? and then gayatri will yield its own fruit you know people do gayatri puraschcharan you might have heard of this in maharashtra thousands of people do it every year it is repeating 24 lakh gayatri in a specified period of time and they do it with such intensity after that period you should see their very face has changed it awakens your entire energy and lifts it to the level of realization it is actually divinizing you so that you may intuit the highest in you brahman in you hmm? so this is the power of gayatri only if you do it you will know it if you don't do it it will again remain like a theory to you you know madan mohan malviya who was the founder of bhu banaras hindu university he was a great uh, advocate of gayatri puraschcharan he used to he did it many times in fact many people have done it and it is the best way to change your entire mechanism your very body will change i am telling you your genes will change your mind will change because it is awakening the faculty of dhi within you if it is done with concentration with with complete mind it will awaken what it is meant to awaken right within you and these five fold faculties of higher intelligence are required for success anywhere in your life please remember this i told you what are they dhi then medha pragna dhriti and smriti these are the five fold qualities of your intelligence dhi is your spiritual heart where you get this knowledge of brahman medha is your higher intelligence pragna is higher awareness dhriti is the higher will and smriti is memory 
complete memory. So, if you want all of these put together, practice Gayatri and see. It was part and parcel of our life. I received the Gayatri when I was very young. And uh, usually in India during Uppanayana ceremony they give it. Mm. So, the, the thing is this, all these things have to be done to be known. You have to do something about it. It is not a theoretical concept. I just told you, you listen to it and it is done. Not like that. Mm. This is, you practice the chanting, you will see the change coming over you. Mind will just clear up. Intelligence will just awaken within you. You will understand all the dimensions of intelligence. Not this stupid one unidirectional intelligence which you do not know where it will take you, which is dependent on outer objects, not that kind. A wholesome, holistic form of intelligence, which is all integrative, which sees the whole thing all together. This level of intelligence is required for higher, you know, understanding. And Medha actually helps you understand the scriptures, mm, the subtleties, a very refined intellect will be generated. The subtleties of the scriptures become graspable. So, all these blessings come with Gayatri. Practice it and see and you yourself will understand what it is about. That is why I gave you the whole story of Gayatri. So, that you remember the story and practice the chanting. Hmm? <coughs> okay. Video over with me talking now. So, I am wondering, so I see that it has to be done in a clean place has to be done intently. I think she said, was it like one to eight or twelve times? Twelve during the morning, noon, and afternoon. <clears throat> but it must be done in some very particular manner. And I think to me that's kind of restrictive. I don't think it's something necessarily for me. I, I, I'm a bit, I guess the things that I want to learn are a bit more flexible. Kind of like how Dandapani said that, why only meditate one hour a day? Why not the entire day? And you think to yourself, well, how can you meditate the entire day? You got to go to work. You got to do things around the house. You got to clean. You got to do all this stuff. Well, <clears throat> it's kind of, it's not like, I guess, full meditation, but it's a meditative state to keep yourself constantly in throughout the entire day. It's like, instead of an example here, I don't know if it's a good one, but you can let me know, like running, like your full sprint running, you know, trying to get from one end to the other, just running, running, running. But that's your meditation. But then the meditative state throughout the day is more like a jog. You're still going in a faster speed, but you're not so intently in there, but you still have that, that kind of state throughout the entire day, which will help you get by. That I like because it's very flexible and something that no person can really have an excuse not to do, <clears throat> you know, because it's like, hey, it's something that you can do throughout the day. You don't have to take time out of whatever you're doing to do it. Let me know, any, does, does anyone do this? I'm curious. And well, like the clean room, I guess that's not really the issue. It's just the, what is it? I guess it's particular times is very restrictive because sometimes you may not be in an area where it's clean, whatever, for whatever reason it may be, and then you can't do it. Uh, maybe you're busy with something, something important came up and then you can't do it. Can't do it like maybe you have a clean room, but your mind is kind of distracted a bit or, or something, just something, you know, important, obviously. <clears throat> and I'm trying to think why, I'm, I'm guessing that's the reason why Lakani, the Lakani and, and Sadhguru was talking about how it's not very practical today. You know, I guess maybe the busy schedule of people's lives. And, and that's the, kind of the thing with me is the fact that, you know, I don't want to have to think about doing something, if possible, but kind of be in that state without thinking about being in that state. So that's why I like the idea of being in a meditative state, meditative state throughout the day. And something that I generally do uh, ever since I learned that life is suffering, <laughs> that changes a lot of things. But also at the same time, my uh, the idea that I have is like, why worry about something that hasn't happened yet and may never happen. So you're sitting there worrying about something that 
could happen, but then may never happen. So you just wasted a lot of energy there. Worry about it when it happens and take care of it. If, it, if there's nothing happening, there's, there's a whole bunch of possibility things of things happening, but don't worry about any of it because you don't know which one's going to happen. <laughs> so just deal with what happens and worry about it then. But out of, outside of that, don't worry about it. It's kind of my, my, my train of thought, I suppose you could say. I think it's a pretty good one, but I mean, obviously, prepare for things, but don't worry about things that haven't happened yet that may happen. Now, if, it, if you know for a fact that it's going to happen, then yes, obviously worry about it. But if it's like, maybe, maybe not, you know, do things, prep for it, don't worry about it. So, again, let me know, um, did I get it right about why it's not practical today? Is it because it has to be in the clean room, you have to do it three times a day, um, you have to do it intently, and... Um, and you have to do it 12 times each time. I think that's what she said. I think that's the recommended. 12 times each time. They said 36, I think she said at one point. But let me know. I, why is it not quite practical? I still have some idea, but I don't know if that's the right one. I don't know if I've misheard or whatever. So let me know. Anyways, that's my reaction to Wisdom of Gaia 3 Mantra. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.